In our last episode of Slavic Wisconsin, we learned about four artists and the materials they use. In this episode, we will hear about the symbolism, folklore, and religious beliefs that give further meaning to these traditional crafts. You can see these traditions in action at many events throughout the state, like the annual Czech-Slovak Festival in Philips, one of several great Slavic cultural events Wisconsin has to offer. Many Slavic folk arts have their roots in ancient pre-Christian beliefs and practices. And artists like Sidanka Wadina continue to use those ancient symbols. In this segment, Sidanka explains some of the mythology behind Slovak straw weaving. This is a folk art that was done in the uh, Eastern European countries at harvest time. And there's a lot of traditions, a lot of customs, patterns, designs involved with this straw weaving. People long ago, and this is the beginning of harvest mythology, didn't understand the process of germination. They thought it was caused by a spirit. They visualized the spirit of the grain as being female. So they would fashion a crude female figure, and they believed that her seeds held the life force of the field. If it was a really good crop, the young maidens in the village would gather around the last sheep that was harvested because it was believed that that last sheep was the resting place of the spirit of the grain. So they would dance around that last sheep and they would sing praises to the goddess of the harvest. And in those days, the three most important factors were that we had sun and rain to make the crops grow. So many of the early pieces had examples of ancient sun symbols in the center of them. They had a symbol that represents rain, and then they had growth symbols. Motifs in traditional arts are often influenced by the natural world and environment of the people who create them. Bernie and Dracek explains that designs in Polish paper cutting have their roots in the landscape and traditional beliefs of the different regions of Poland. Turpia is in northeastern Poland and it's very heavily forested. So the, the sun, the canopy, the forest canopy is quite thick. In their embroidery and in their paperwork, a lot of times they'll have like a sunburst or star shape. They actually call these gviazdy, which are stars. The story I heard from them is that they rarely see the stars or the sun, and so they like to be reminded of it in their, in their embroidery, in the women's and men's embroidery, and in their paper cutouts. The other form is called a leluya, or lily. This is kind of a traditional pagan tree of life, and you'll see the, the roosters, which are a symbol of fertility, which is a very popular design in, in a lot of Polish paper cuttings. Many of the symbols used to decorate Ukrainian pizanke have their roots in the natural world, too, as Betty Paisa Christensen explains. Every egg that we do has, has a meaning, and like this one here with the wheat on it, it stands for a bountiful harvest. The, the wolf's teeth pattern, the little teeth, that is the protection uh, uh, line that protects us from evil. The poppies is the Ukrainian flower. When Christianity arrived in Ukraine in the 10th century, these symbols were adopted by the church, giving the eggs another layer of meaning. All the eggs that are done in the Slavic countries all have one purpose. They all start with a very religious part, and they're all done at Easter. The religious part of the Pesanki is so widespread that I could talk from here to tomorrow. <laughs> the lines that go around our Pesanki stands for eternity. There is no beginning, there is no end. The diamond stands for knowledge. The white stands for purity and innocence. The red stands for the blood of Christ. Black stands for eternity or death. <laughs> 
пошия рукава. Як ви віде по тореці, до пошия рукавиці, як устану ця конці, до пошия штанці. Stephanie Viljanic Lemke grew up in a heavily Catholic area in Croatia, where her mother used the God's Eye eggs to represent the morals she wanted her children to learn. My designs usually were simply God's eyes, and when mother would be talking about God's power over us and how we have to behave, that God's eyes always looking after us, she would usually turn, make, made, make us focus on one of those God's, God's eyes and show it this way so that you could see that even if God is not looking directly at you, he is looking sideways at you. <laughs> so, so at that age, you know, you really think like, okay, God, I'd be good. Symbols in traditional arts tell stories and communicate meanings. When she decorated eggs, Betty carefully considered what she wanted to communicate to the recipient and chose the motifs for their meanings. For Betty, the symbols were more than just pictures. They were a language all on their own. Byzanki in Ukrainian means to write, and that's what we do every time we, we make a little uh, a pizanki, is we tell a tiny little story. We, whoever we're going to give this, this egg to, if I give anyone an egg with a deer on it, that stands for wealth and prosperity. In other words, the person I am going to give this egg to, I'm wishing them wealth and prosperity. And this is one of the type of eggs that I will usually give to a young couple who is just getting married, I'm wishing them wealth and good prosperity. This podcast is produced by the Wisconsin Arts Board with support from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism and the National Endowment for the Arts. Find out more about the traditional arts and artists of Wisconsin at www.wisconsinfolks.org then head over to www.travelwisconsin.com for more information on where to go to experience Slavic Wisconsin for yourself. Music